Well, oh boy, it is time. The third Saturday in October has finally arrived, and this time, the rivalry actually means something. Tennessee knocked off Alabama last season, but this year, the stakes could not be higher. Both teams sitting with one loss, and if the wh wh whoever loses is going to end up in a lot of trouble, likely eliminated from pretty much everything that means something, so... The importance of this game is absolutely huge for both squads, but who is going to come out on top? Based on the fact of what I'm wearing, you can assume that I'm going to pick Alabama to win this game, right? Cue that intro. Uh, Oi, fellow comrades, it is Squid Tart here, and welcome back to another preview video. We got a big preview this week. Tennessee's going on the road into Tuscaloosa to play the Alabama Crimson Tide. The season rides on this matchup for both of these squads. As I mentioned at the start of the video, both Tennessee and Alabama have a loss on the season, so the importance of this game is key for any team that wants to make the college football playoffs or even the win the SEC. With the SEC race as tight as it is, uh, who knows how that's going to play out. But anyway, it's going to be interesting to see which team comes out on top here. Uh, a lot of hype favoring towards Alabama after Tennessee's performance, but there's also a lot of hype towards Tennessee based on last year's matchup and the fact that, as I mentioned, the rivalry actually means something now. The Volunteers coming into this game with a lot of hype on them, coming in at 5-1. and one, And, well, <laughs> to say that there's a lot of expectations set on this game for the Volunteers... Uh, that would be an understatement. Uh, giving you some basic knowledge about this matchup. Right now, uh, Tennessee is, I guess, losing the series 58-39-7. So to say that Alabama's 15-year streak of beating Tennessee was key in favoritism of that would be a massive understatement as well. But, of course, last year, everybody on America, on, or in America, excuse me, Everyone remembers that matchup from last season. It was a huge game. Uh, it was a huge game uh, going into the matchup. Both teams are undefeated. It was in Knoxville. Tennessee lost 15 straight before that. And with the field goal from Chase McGrath at the very end of the game, Tennessee wins 52-49, to solidifies themselves in, the, in the, uh, the upper echelon of the SEC at that point. And just, it was a huge win for Tennessee, but it was a very, very awesome game to watch as a non-biased college football fan. Well, uh, unfortunately for y'all watching, I do have some bias in this matchup. Of course, I didn't want Alabama to win this game. And uh, seeing Tennessee win that way, of course, brought a lot of things. The most important of which, the official squid tart face reveal. So that's the biggest key from that game. But yep, now we're a year ahead uh, from that matchup. Right now, going into this game, it's in Tuscaloosa, as I mentioned before. Alabama's coming into this game favored by nine. And the last time Tennessee beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa was all the way back in 2003, credit to a man known as Casey Clawson, back when he was playing. That's the last time Tennessee went on the road and knocked off Alabama. So, <sighs> big streak to break. We couldn't do it against Florida because, in fact, the last time we uh, beat Florida in Gainesville was 2003. Is there such a thing as Tuscaloosa voodoo? I, 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 I don't know. But the point is, there's a lot of hype on this matchup for both teams. Talking about Tennessee, right now, as I said, they're 5-1. and one, Came off a big win over Texas A&M. The defense played out of their minds. But the offense is a little lackluster, uh, to say so. Joe Milton, only 11 of 22. He had one touchdown, one interception, and 100 yards total passing. Tennessee's passing game, compared to last year, has gone completely non-existent. And that's important to remember, because last year... Tennessee, they won that game through the air. You know, Jalen Hyatt had five touchdowns. Uh, Hendon Hooker had a bunch of yardage passing. We barely even ran the ball in that game. Tennessee's, most of their plays came through uh, with exciting pass plays. And that's kind of been the story all season long for Tennessee. The run game, as usual, has been very, very good. However, the passing game has just basically disappeared. Uh, against Texas A&M, which I talked about last week, held the number one rush defense in the SEC, Tennessee ran for over 200 total rushing yards against Texas A&M. And compared to how, you know, that Texas A&M defensive line is really, really good. So to do that against A&M, 
you can probably run the ball that well on anybody at that point. But still, even with all the good uh, you know, rush yards that we got, it still wasn't enough to close the gap against Texas A&M. It was a one-score game all the way throughout the entirety of the game. Tennessee actually had to come back, and it was the first time Josh Heupel scored less than 30 points in a game and had his team win that game. It was a very, very big moment to break that streak. And I think it was the first time um, at Tennessee that Josh Heupel won when he was losing at halftime. So that's something to, to uh, take notice of. A lot of streaks broken. I know, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, the passing game, as I said, very underwhelming, including the wide receivers. Chaz Nimrod had the most yards on our team which was 31, and that is very, very atrocious when you're talking about a good passing game, and Tennessee has been lacking that all season long. Whether you want to blame that on Joe Milton or the play calling or the wide receiver core not being able to catch footballs, there's a lot of blame to go around everywhere, but hopefully that's that, that, that's going to play a huge, huge part in this game, so it needs to be fixed immediately or sooner. Cooper Mays has been a huge part of this offensive line. He's partly why we've been able to run the ball so well. In fact, he was a huge part of why we're able to do that so well. Uh, we missed him after the Florida game, and then he came back against South Carolina. And it, it's proven very well that having him back has been a huge key and part of this offense. Dante Thornton, I'm not sure about the status of him. Is it, I know he got injured a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if he's going to be playing this game. And of course, Brew McCoy is probably not going to. Whichever, uh, for all of our injured players, I hope they recover as soon as possible, of course. Injuries suck, and I hope that they get recovered very quick. Aaron Beasley, still a wrecking crew on the defense. He led in defensive tackles. However, there's a new star rising up. This guy, James Pierce Jr., is an absolute unit. Right now, he's leading as the best defensive player per P PFF, I think is what they call it. Um, absolute unit. Uh, half the time Texas A&M threw the ball, uh, he was in there in the backfield getting pressure on him. He's forced the most quarterback pressures out of anybody I've ever seen. It's reminiscent of something you'd see from Derek Barnett, and that's some you know, that that really is something to say. That I mean, we've seen comparisons where they're talking about him as compared to Chase Young from Ohio State a couple of years ago. And if that's what we got on defense then look out, Alabama, is what I'll be saying. Kamal Haddon and the entire defensive backfield has risen up, and, well, the defense has just been playing exponentially better than how they started, and especially compared to last year. And D. Williams has basically... Uh, he, he's basically statured himself as return man of the year so far, in my opinion. He's playing out of his mind. He got another return touchdown uh, against Texas A&M. He's just an absolute beast, and I think everybody needs to uh, watch out for him. And special teams is going to play a part in this matchup, I think, so we'll see how it goes. Now, on the other side of things, let's, go, let's talk about Alabama. So, Bama coming into this game at 6-1. and one. They lost that game to Texas early in the season at home, but they ended up winning everything out, and including a win over Ole Miss. They also beat um, a couple of other pretty good teams. And then uh, the Arkansas game had a lot of people scratching their heads. Bama was leading 24-6 to or something like that. Arkansas out of nowhere climbs all the way back, and in the fourth quarter, it's a three-point game. But Bama held on to win that one, 24-21. to And, uh, well... <sighs> You know, people are starting to see cracks in the Nick Saban armor, and it's very, very concerning if you're, you know, if you're Alabama, to see if whether or not they can show up for this game, uh, big and strong. So going up against, let's talk about the Texas A&M game first, and I'm going to compare that to how Tennessee performed against A&M. So A&M or Bama could not run the ball to save their life against A&M. Total of 23 rushing yards throughout the entirety of the game. Just a terrible, terrible running performance. It was just, you know, they could not run the ball to save their life. Now, the big difference is, though, Jalen Milrow had a pretty good game. 21 of 33, 320, 321 yards through the air, three touchdowns, only one interception. So it's very clear that Bama does have their passing game retained at least. Uh, a lot of people thought that Bama was not going to be able to throw the ball efficiently against A&M, and they proved that wrong. So even if they can't run the ball, Bama still can torch you through the air. Uh, and their defense is playing pretty well as well. Held Texas A&M 27 rushing yards. I know um, A&M got some you know yards through passing. However, it wasn't enough to beat Alabama, as we all know. Now, looking at the Arkansas game, uh, this latest game that Bama's played, 
Of course, Arkansas lost the game 24 to 21. Jalen Milrow did not have a great performance. He was 10 of 21, still threw, for, still threw for 238 yards and had two touchdowns to go along with that. Over on the other side, KJ Jefferson, he had 150 yards passing. Uh, had a couple of yards rushing as well, but nothing too spectacular. Arkansas with maybe 100 total rush yards. Not too bad, but, you know, it's, it's something to take notice of. And the most important thing to take from that, though, is that there was no runner in that game with over 50 yards rushing. So Alabama's done a pretty good job stopping the run, but so has Texas A&M. So it's a matter of whether or not t uh, Tennessee is going to be able to run the ball on Alabama is what I, how I think is gonna, that, that is going to uh, play out in this game. Well, of course... Looking at things uh, in terms of injuries, Malachi Moore, questionable status uh, against Tennessee. And that's the only, you know, I think their punters out for this game. I don't really know how that's going to play out. I don't really see that playing. A, you know, it could play a big part, but because, you know, say, in fact, this happened last year too. Bama had a mistake on special teams. Guy goes in to try and catch the uh, Tennessee punt. And then he muffs the punt. Tennessee gets the ball back. It was just a huge mishap. And it caused Nick Saban to have a stroke on the sideline. Anyway, um, so who I think is going to win this game? Well, um, it's, it's tough to call. It's tough to call. I will say that. It's going to be a big game. I think it's going to be a really close game, actually. I don't think, you know, if anybody's going to run away with this game, it's obviously going to be Alabama. I don't think there is a plausible scenario where Tennessee just outright runs, you know, just runs away with it and blows out Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Even if that were a possibility, I definitely do not see that happening. Tennessee just not has not looked good throwing the ball, and that would be a big part if they were able to blow Alabama out, which I don't really see happening, as I've said before. Anyway, Tennessee's big key here is, are they going to be able, be able to run the ball as efficiently as they did against Texas A&M? I think they will. I think Tennessee is going to have... You know, they're going to have issues running the ball on occasions, especially if Alabama is taking notice of the difficulties in passing game. So it's going to take Josh Heupel to basically, you know, I guess pull out his bag of tricks, if you want to say it, say it like that. Uh, so my, my opinion on that is I think if Josh Heupel has a really good game plan going into this game, pulls out his bag of tricks, makes some plays happen, and most importantly, the passing game shows up to where it needs to. Tennessee definitely has the poten potential to win this game. And on the Alabama side, of course, are they going to be able to shut down this Tennessee defense that's going to be on them the entire game? How is Jalen Miller going to respond to the pressure? I saw an interview where he was like, we're going to have fun. Uh, and in his mind, uh, he thinks the offensive line is going to be able to hold down players like James Pierce Jr., which could be, you know, it could be way better than what Texas A&M had to go through. But the truth of the matter is, it's not, you know, they're not going to stop them every single time. I think no matter which scenario you want to picture in your mind, whether you're an Alabama fan, a Tennessee fan, or just a spectator, uh, this is going to be a low-scoring defensive game. I, I don't think any of these squads are just going to start balling out. It's definitely going to, I think it's going to be a mirror image of what we saw last year. But who comes out on top is the big question. Well, Tennessee. <laughs> there, there's no way, no matter which case you want me to throw out there, that I'm going to ride against the Tennessee Vols with doing these preview videos. So far, I appear to be doing pretty well in them. I'm 5-1 and one in my uh, preview picks uh, for the season. So, of course, I'm going to ride with the Vols here. It's going to be a low-scoring defensive game. So if I had to choose a final score prediction, I will go ahead and give you guys a score of 27 to 24. Tennessee beats Alabama in Tuscaloosa. All right, well, that is my pick for the uh, for this game. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm sure there's some Alabama fans which have already typed up some comments. Uh, they, they've been using this keyboard uh, to efficiency in the past five minutes that they've been listening to me, so... Yeah, each comment helps. If you want to leave a comment of your own, please do that. And as always, uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe to Squidtard Sports if you haven't already, and as always, join that uh, the college football Discord in the description below. We have a great, great time down there. And of course, it'll give you a grand old opportunity to clout me if Tennessee winds up losing against Alabama. So uh, until that game comes, of course, I've got my hate video coming out tomorrow, and you absolutely do not want to miss that one. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And I guarantee you, 
you will want to watch it. So until the next video, I'll see you guys next time. And as always, power to Tardaria, and more importantly, go Vols.